5. Dot. Conclusion and Additional Remarks What is the best available evidence for the survival of human consciousness after permanent bodily death? In this essay, we have chosen to answer this question by presenting the phenomena produced by Francisco Candido Zavia, our white crow. We specifically chose his mediumistic writings due to the huge amount of objective and verifiable information contained in his work, which makes any hypothesis more adequate for tests and falsification. Through a rigorous analysis of the events and further evaluation of the possible explanations, we conclude that the survival of the human consciousness after bodily death is the most probable and simplest explanation for all the observations. By confronting the posited hypotheses with the facts and showing that the phenomena described here cannot be unraveled in any other way, we legitimate our arguments. At the end of the day, we can claim our evidence to be the best only if we explain it solely through the survival explanation. By contrast, the other posited hypotheses suffer some very significant limitations. They not only fail to accommodate all the observed phenomena, but they also require highly unlikely circumstances to occur, such as Xavier's having a team of spies stalking on people's private life or a team of intellectuals performing intense research on other writers' work. All of this in a time and place with no computers, internet, or access to a library. Those hypotheses also require Xavier to have either a super mnemonic ability, never recorded in any human being to date, or some kind of psychiatric disorder that was not in his medical record. In the best case scenario, the hypotheses of fraud assume that all the information provided by Xavier is nothing but a colossal deception. In this sense, Xavier would be no more than a shady, nasty man who achieved a record feat of deceiving millions of people in exchange for reputation and funding of charity work. That appears not to be the case. So, given that the hypotheses of fraud or super psi function seem untenable at the very least, why does the survival hypothesis still significantly face resistance in the academic environment? What are the reasons scientists either deny the facts or object to the afterlife option despite most of the population endorsing it? One of the reasons we can think of is the general misunderstanding regarding the words science and religion and their supposed opposite nature. At this point, we hope that the reader understands that science is a way of investigating the world based on observations and facts, not a position regarding a topic. So, to say that science rejects the afterlife does not make sense. Science is not an entity and does not accept or reject anything. Scientists do, based on observational and experimental evidence. Religion and mysticism, in turn, are sets of beliefs that consider the afterlife. Note that these topics are also present in some books and letters written by Xavier. The survivalist hypothesis, however, does not imply religion nor mysticism. They are independent of one another. Once we understand these concepts, we recognize that the afterlife can and should be investigated in a scientific manner. Unfortunately, many scientists struggle to understand it, defending their view of reality against any outside contender. The class of observations discussed in this essay challenges and causes discomfort to some physicalists who, driven by their own expectations, think these facts do not match their worldview. It is science made backward. It is one's point of view dictating the arguments. The problem with mediumship censors is not that they believe too much in science, but that they do not believe in it enough. Hence, from a scientific perspective, we believe that Xavier and his life's work are the best answers to the question posed in this essay.